Good afternoon, everybody. I just want to give you a quick little run through what this wonderful apparatus called the Ingle Fire can do. So first up, we've had an Ingle Fire now on this deck for over five years. We live in a very coastal uh, sort of surrounding. We've got a beach about 500 metres over there. It's west coast. We get a lot of wind. We get a lot of sea breeze coming over. And the fire is looking as good as it was delivered five years ago. Uh, fully stainless steel. Um, the only other parts in it is brass. So stainless steel brass. It's insulated. I've had this fire going for about an hour now. Uh, and I can put my hands onto this and certainly onto the flue. The flue is huge. It's, this one is 2.4 meters long and the flue is insulated. And so what that does is that flue heats up. And once it gets hot, it draws all that smoke all the way up and out. Never ever would we get smoke coming down into our house because the smoke is all up and away. At the moment I'm using some tea tree on here, um, but you could use Budokawa, you could use a, a gum or any sort of hardwood. Um, when you're just using it as a fireplace, just to keep you warm, just to entertain, you could chuck anything in there as long as it's not treated. So let me run through the operational side of the Ingle fire. So first up we have this wonderful basket. This basket is on brass rollers. You can roll this back and you can also pull this forward. And the good thing about that is it's a multitude of things. Is the first thing is you've got your fire going in there. I've just put a little bit of stake in the side there. And here, if we move over to this side here, you can lower that grill up and down. You see that? As I lift this arm up and down, it lowers the grill up and down. So the grill's now sitting directly over the top of those flames. And I am cooking my delicious piece of meat on those flames, just to the side. There is nothing better, people, I tell you, there is nothing better than a piece of meat cooked over wood. It is the best. So now I've cooked this. So this is um, some thick flank or some brisket. I want to cook it slowly by the assistant. Can I have some tin foil, please? This is Ivy. Ivy, say hello. Hello. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this thick flank, which I've seared off nicely. I'm going to pop it into some tin foil. I'm going to wrap that up. Still leave it just a little bit open. I could put some moisture in there. I could put some beer in there if I want. I'm just going to keep this simple. I'm going to pop that off to the side. And now this grill goes from I've been cooking, I've been barbecuing, to now I'm going to lift this right up into that top cavity. Can you see it right up there, Hazel? Right up there, tucked away. There it is. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to close the flue at the top. And this flue at the moment is open because all the smoke is going up and out. But I'm going to close this flue now. See that? Instantly you see the smoke coming out the front. You're now turning your ingle fire into a tremendously hot cooker. It's a hot smoker. So you see this temperature gauge? See it rising up? It's going to crank up. So if that's a piece of meat, you'd want that to go to maybe 150. If it's some hot smoked fish, you'd salt the fish, you'd put the fish up the top, and you'd shut the door. See all the smoke coming out? Look at it, it's cranking. If you want that to go down, you just open the flue. And out it goes, up the top. There it goes. So now that's another great part of the angle fire. So now I'm going to show you another part. So this here is your firebox. You move that back. I'm going to put my pizzas straight down onto that. That is really hot, people. Put our pizzas straight down onto that stone. We cook it. We could also put it up onto that top part to finish it afterwards. Down onto the stone first, using the Ingle Fire fish scoopy and pizza scoopy. Up onto that top part, finish the top off, pull it out. Delicious pizzas. But wait, there is so much more. The rotisserie part is probably the part that I use the most. Ivy, my assistant, rotisserie please. Here it comes. Thank you Ivy, well done. So this is full stainless steel. It comes with the fire and here you go. A massive 
rotisserie bar. Look at the length of that. I've boned and rolled a whole sheep or lamb and I've put it on there. These forks are so deep, they go right into your meat. So as that meat shrinks, it, it continues to hold it. You could have one there, you could have another one there, you could have one there, you could have one there, you could have one there. You could have multiple chickens going at the same time. These all come with the fire. So now we're going to put this rotisserie on. I'll show you how easy it is. It's sitting on its own dripper tray. So as it cooks, the juice falls down into this tray. You can put stuff into this tray. You can put pumpkin, you can put kuma, you can put potatoes and cook on there if you want to. But I just use it mainly to catch all the juices and to keep my barbecue looking really, really clean. So that goes into that end, like so. And then we push that in. That comes into that end. Sits into our little motor, which is on the end here. We turn that on. And then, see that turning? That is now a wonderful rotisserie unit. I'll close it down. I've got a bone and rolled shoulder in there. Shut that down, shut that down. Bring the flue down halfway. Wait for that temperature to go up to 150 degrees. And I think 150 degrees is a really good temperature for cooking. Hey, you might want to bring it up to 100 and just go really slow. If you find it hard to get up to that 150, you open it up, you put a bit more wood down the back there, you close it back down again. You open up the flue if you want the temperature to come up because then it draws air through the front and up out of the flue. If you want to slow it down, you shut that flue down, it closes down, you can see all that smoke coming out. So that's the rotisserie part to this fire which I think is the best part of an ingle fire but it also has as you know, so many other things you can do and then at the end of the night you pull your rotisserie out using some gloves you've got your piece of chicken on there it's sitting on the tray it's resting if you've got a piece of lamb on there if you've got a, a, a bone and rolled lamb rump you can just carve it straight on here and serve it and then once you've all done you're finished, everyone's full, they've had delicious meat, they've had vegetables, they've had fish. You then pull this forward, like so. You put another piece of wood onto it. You pull out some wood. Load another bit onto that. Keep it nice and forward. And you sit down around a delicious warm fire. Thank you people. That's just a brief look all the wonderful things that this fire can do.